Hey kids, welcome back to Let's Play Disco Elysium. God, I'm so excited every time I boot up this game. Uh, I'm going to be discovering it along with you on this uh, Let's Play, so... So yeah, it's uh, really one of the most exciting projects I have currently going on my channel. Uh, small side note before we get before we dive in here, uh, I've noticed that the the music in this game, uh, which is really amazing, they had a uh, Brit uh, British indie band, uh, uh, British Sea Power, record like the equivalent of three albums to do the music in this game, which is just amazing. Uh, and I, unfortunately, I am getting uh, copyright notifications on, on I got on the last video. Which means that, essentially, it just means I won't be able to monetize this video. But I'm, to be honest, perfectly honest, I'm fine with that. As long as, as long as I don't get any copyright strikes, I am. I'm going to keep the music on, and uh, copyright strikes would affect my my channel. But for now, I'm not getting any actual strikes. I'm just getting, I'm just getting uh, a little notification telling me I can't monetize the videos. And I guess presumably any any ad revenue that would be generated from this video, if it ever does generate ad revenue, would go to the owner of the copyright, which I, I just, I couldn't care less to be honest, uh, that's, that's fine. Um, but anyway, hopefully, hopefully we'll be able to keep the music on and not turn it down because I think it, it, it just really sets the atmosphere for this game amazingly. Um, anyway, with that, uh, with that out of the way, I'd like to just dive in. Last episode, we, we, all we've managed to do was get our clothes on, which I think speaks to... <laughs> just how crazy this game is. We spent a whole episode just finding our clothes and coming downstairs and we talked to the the uh, cigarette smoking girl standing in the hallway upstairs and here we have emerged into into the uh, the kind of foyer of this uh, of this hotel. So without further ado, let's uh, let's start looking around at what we have to interact with in this in this space. So I can see a, a guy standing over there. Now we're we're pretty hungover. I don't think we're quite ready to talk to anyone yet. Let's just uh, so this is where the lyrics would be. A big old karaoke mic just waiting for someone to sing it into it. Uh oh. The speaker is connected to the radio. The music is seasoned with static. Oh, we have we have a thought. Inland Empire. You should totally sing your kara uh, sing karaoke here. The first chance you get. Your emotions need to be expressed. People need to know of your vast oceanic soul. My soul's cubic content is obscured by the hangover. Of course, at this point, precise measurement of your soul can only be performed from the outside. It needs to be heard. The Inland Empire is really a crazy part of your brain. <laughs> through a PA system. By other people. <laughs> Isn't that what goes through your head when you're about to sing karaoke? Uh, what should I sing when it comes to it? You should sing the sad small church song from the tape you found. Thought it was obvious. Mm, of course, they'll really gauge. They'll really get a gauge on my soul with that one. Serves them right. Wipe that smirk off their face with your sad, tragic small church song. Who's laughing now? No one. So we've just gained a task: sing karaoke. You would need another copy of the tape first, though. The one upstairs is destroyed. Well, that's that. I guess. Uh, I guess we will have to find a, a copy of that tape at some point if we want to pursue pursue that uh, task. Uh. All right, let's look around here. Okay, we've got Nosafed, which I guess is some kind of medicine. Looks like a fire extinguisher, to be honest. Um, so that, that increases our health. Uh, I'm going to hit take all. I, I was reading, I've been doing a little bit of research, and one thing I've learned is that this game is unlike, you know, a, a lot of open RPGs. This game, if you pick stuff up off of surfaces and stuff, it's, it's not considered stealing. And I think if you do steal something, it will it will give you some some warning beforehand. So we, we can we can not worry too much about picking up things that we find. This is a water cooler. A large bubble is rising rising to the surface. The menu has been wiped clean. Only the word Monday is written on it. And then we have this thought here: a, a woman's hand wrote yesterday's menu. Today's starts in a man's handwriting. I thought it was wiped clean. All right. Now let's let's talk to this dude here. 
Garte, the cafeteria manager. A man in his late 20s stands behind the counter inspecting a stuffed seabird. As you approach, he gives you a sideways glance, then looks down again. Empathy. That was disdain in his eyes. Even now, he's purposefully ignoring you. So what's our... we have... huh. So that, I, guess, I, don't know that, I guess that's one of these sort of small rolls that happens without us actually seeing the dice. Hm. Well, I could say something tells me you don't like me. Although I'm kind of tempted not to say that, to be honest. Let's look at the stuffed bird. A competent work of taxidermy, the white and brown seabird lies among piles of coast coasters and drying mugs. One of its wings broken. The man is trying to mend it. Looks like the bird was ripped off the shield that, it, that, used, that was used to mount it, most likely on the wall. Encyclopedia. This is a great skua. The seabird is the symbol for the discovery of the Insulindian Isola. How do you say that word? I don't know. The part of the world you're in right now. Isola, maybe. Something about it makes you feel bitter. That's the great skua, right? Look. Look, he, your oh. buddy is over there. He looks at the doors where a man in a bomber jacket is tapping his foot on the floor. Why don't you go and talk to him, okay? What do you mean, my buddy? He pretends not to hear you, concentrating on the bird instead. I'm just gonna leave. I'm gonna leave it at that. Cle clearly doesn't want to talk to us. Oh, uh, you know, one thing I forgot to mention at the beginning of this video. Uh, last episode, I, I, rather, foolishly suggested that the developers of this game were from Ukraine. Uh, they're not. They're they're from the the writer of the game is from Estonia, and uh, and the company th is based in Estonia and the UK. And I guess a lot of all the voice acting is is British. Um, so I I do <laughs> I do apologize profusely for that error. I don't know where I read Ukraine. I I was fishing around the internet. I I noticed that um Zaum, the developer, uh, they don't have like a, a, a Wikipedia or anything. I, I wanted to give like, my, my goal was to give a little little detail on the company that made it. Uh, and and uh, and yeah, no. Uh, so not the Ukraine, not Ukraine, uh, Estonia. So yeah, sorry about that. But uh, I'll try and uh, do better research. Oh, what do we got here? A thought. The soft purr of an electric juicer comes from the kitchen. Someone is working. The door is bolted. A sign reads, Kitchen reserved for personnel until 1300 hours. Well, I guess there's our buddy. Let's, let's finish looking around first. A sign reads, Mess hall reserved for union members. Doors open 1600 hours. This royal pinball machine is unplugged. What's up here? Can I get there, or is it like out of reach? Hmm. Looks like it's out of reach. Yeah, let's uh, let's go talk to the this our 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 buddy. Find out what's going on here. Kim Kitsuragi. A bespectacled man in an orange bomber jacket is tapping his foot on the floor. Looks like he's waiting for someone. You. As you approach, he narrows his eyes and extends his hand in greeting. Esprit de corps. So this is, once again, this this uh, this skill is sort of, uh, it sort of means camaraderie, you know, and specifically in this case, our, our camaraderie with fellow police officers. Um, and it's, it's our kind of instinct, our, our, our cop instinct, so to speak. If an assault were launched on this building right now, if the windows came crashing down and the whole world descended upon you, this man would hurl himself in death's way to save you. You're sure of this, but why? Uh, I guess I should shake his hand. Yeah, let's shake his hand. Hello, I'm Kim Kitsuragi, Lieutenant, Prison 57. You must be from the 41st. You realize he's waiting for your name. This is your chance to come up with a really good name for yourself. Get creative. Conceptualize. And we have a 72% chance of inventing a, na a convincing name for ourselves. 
This is a red check. It cannot be retried. Hmm. Uh, I mean, I think it's just too crazy to uh, to not know our own name. Uh, you know, I think if we're... <coughs> um, I think we got to kind of make sure we don't look too crazy with this guy. But, I don't know. We could just say nothing. It's just too tempting to do this, though, isn't it? Yeah, let's do it. Concentration makes you squint your eyes. Your name should be deep gold and orange, like a forest fire looming on the horizon, but mixed with the stench of liquor rising from your breath. You're two steps closer to it, but there are still many to go. Hmm, this is a weird one. It's funny, we passed that, we passed that test, and then we, we, we don't really get much, uh... It is not yet time. Uh, both of these sound crazy. I'm just gonna say nothing. It looks like we had a little scheduling error on Sunday. Saturday too, actually. Have you had time to talk to the manager here? What he means is that he's been trying to meet up with you for two days, but you have been otherwise occupied. <laughs> There's our rhetoric skill. That was our signature skill. Uh, you mean him? Yeah, I just talked to him. If you don't mind, we should talk to him again. Ask him for a rundown of the area. Now that I'm here as well. I understand the scene is out back, right? It also wouldn't hurt to assure him the police are finally here. In full force, I mean. Have you mapped out the initial interviews? <laughs> mm, I'm just gonna say I haven't, because I certainly haven't. Okay. We'll have time for that after we take a look at the coroner's case. Have you removed the dead body? So this, this, uh, this highlights really what I like about this game. I think when you think about um, a lot of other games, like sort of the, in the Baldur's Gate genre, isometric CRPGs, one of the problems with games like that, the kind of classic problems, is that you're often presented with a number of dialogue choices that you like none of them fit the character that you want to play and I think this game is really good at providing you with dialogue options that are kind of ambiguous to the degree that it's sort of left open to interpretation so you don't really have to second guess it like look at this dead body I don't like dead bodies look man you know yeah no completely like it you can there's a, a lot is left up for interpretation here uh, to the imagination in terms of what we're projecting when we say any one of these things have you removed the dead body from the tree? <laughs> Look, man, you know, yeah. Uh, very, very tempted to say that. Uh, I'm going to say that. Does that mean the body is no longer in the tree? Uh, no. <laughs> so the body is still in the tree. This is the first time you detect a weariness in the lieutenant's voice. It is obvious he would have preferred for the body to no longer be in the tree. <laughs> Where it has been hanging for seven days straight. We should go there as soon as we are done talking to the owner. Uh, yeah, I think we don't want to seem too disoriented with this guy. Let's get going then. All right, we've got two new tasks. Interview the cafeteria manager and inspect the victim's body. After you, officer. If you're about to embark on an investigation, shouldn't you have a badge? Wait, shouldn't I have a badge or something? You mean you don't have a badge? It wasn't on me when I woke up. Losing your identification card is a serious matter. Uh, my vehicle has a short wave. You can use it to report your badge missing. I advise you try to locate it as quickly as possible, but getting the body down should still take precedence. Yeah, it sounds like it. Uh, tutorial 8. Oh, <laughs> okay. He's now in our party. Right. So we have... Now, we we're accumulating tasks here. Uh, report your badge missing. Inspect victim's body. Interview cafeteria manager. I'm just gonna look at this map thing here. Yeah, no map information incomplete. Oh yeah, we can we can try the mirror again. <laughs> that didn't go so well last time. Okay, well, uh, let's go talk to let's go talk to the cafeteria manager. 
The man with the unimpressed beard notices you approaching. He drops the ledger he was holding and turns to the lieutenant. Mr. Garte, Mr. right? Oh. Gart, right? You run this place. I really must try to not to talk over the uh, voice acting. All right, Kim glances into his little notebook. Yes. yes. I am Kim Kitsuragi from Prison 57. This is an inter-district investigation. So joining me from Prison 41... Uh, I'm gonna say nothing. <laughs> right. Now, I know it took us a while to arrive at the scene. It also took you a while to call us and report the dead body. It was you who placed the call, yes? No, I only just got here. It was probably Sylvie who called you. She usually works the bar here. I'm only temporarily taking over her duties. Do you have her number? As a matter of fact, I do. He looks behind a pile of coasters, finds a slip of paper, and hands it to the lieutenant. So we have a new task. Who made the call reporting the crime? You said you just got here. From where? Are you a local? What? Of Martinez? No. I live in Jamrock. I only sometimes come here to keep an eye on the place. This is just one of the many, many cafeterias I manage. But you still know your way around, yes? In case we need directions. Yes, I know where some things are. But as I said, I don't live here. I just used to work here. And I'm not going to start working here again, if that's what you think. I didn't imply that. Detective? He probably means this is where you step in and ask your questions. <laughs> logic. We need logic to come up with that. Right then, questions. I got this. His, his face expresses profound doubt in your having this. So we get this little piece of advice from the rhetoric part of our brain here. Ask him about the body's location before asking if he killed him. People give up information in the, mo in, in the more innocuous questions, which you can later use in the more sinister ones, not vice versa. All right. Where exactly is the body? Behind the building is a courtyard. He points up. He points to the kitchen behind him. They hoisted him up on a tree there. And how do we get there then? That's easy. See that door there? He points to the west. First you exit through that, then to the right you should see a big hole in the fence, a really big one. You can get to the courtyard through through there. No need for keys. The hole is big enough for a Franco-Nigerian Franco Nigerian Franco-Nigerian cal cavalry to fit through. I don't know. I don't know how I'm supposed to pronounce that. It must be part of the lore of the game. Um I guess do you know who killed him? I don't know who killed him. I'm not the police. That's your job. Rhetoric. That this is it. He said they hoisted him up on a tree. Who is this they if they if he doesn't if he if he doesn't know? I this might be a spelling error to be honest. If he doesn't who is they if he doesn't now? No, it must be I think they mean no. Uh, before you said they hosted him up on a tree, who do you mean by they? Oh, he's a bit surprised you caught that. People are saying it was the union dock workers, that, that, that it was a lynching. Who exactly is saying that? The locals, customers, the people who eat here. A lot of dock workers eat here. Sylvie told me everyone knows the dock workers did it. Did the débardeur, uh, which I think is just the French word for dock workers. It's interesting, there's lots, like I said in that last episode, there's, there's, there's lots... Lots of um, French in this game. Did the Debardeurs tell uh, themselves tell her this, or is it a rumor? I don't really know. You'll have to ask her. Why would the dock workers lynch this man? I would suppose it's because they have nothing better to do. You mean the strike? Yes, the strike. He makes little quotation marks with his fingers. The man they hanged was a security guard for the harbor company, I hear. A mercenary. The Unionistas probably thought they'd send a message. Okay, well, I'm not going to ask this. That's crazy. I have another question. Okay, the lieutenant turns the page in the little notebook book he's been scribbling in. At least someone's taking notes. Uh, why did Sylvie go away? She went away because none of your business. Have they not been telling telling you you're a cop? Am I not a cop? Everything is my business. Uh, I think, uh... I think we'll say that. 
Okay, you got me. She went away because of the dead body out back and because I asked for her number. That's why Sylvie went away. I hope you appreciate that. The lieutenant opens his little notebook at the cover. The number is safely tucked away in the small pocket. Thank you, he says. Didn't go well? I asked an employee out. She didn't want to come, but felt obliged to. It was a bad idea. Now, what is what is so goddamn fascinating about that for you? It's got nothing to do with the uh, lynching. Everything has something to do with everything. Good for you. Was there something else? I'd like to get back to what I was doing. Mm, I'm not going to ask that. Are you the bartender? He's told us he's the cafeteria manager, repeatedly. Uh, that's all. Alright, let's go. Not so fast, he points to you. You owe me 130 real. Uh, I'm not going to try and run away without paying. What's real? Oh, excuse me, you owe me 130 real. He pronounces the R with a mock aristocratic accent. <laughs> The, the uh, encyclopedia tells us that the IIR, or intersolary real, is the global reserve currency. Whatever part of the world you're in right now, it's safe to assume he means you owe him some money. Oh, I understand. You mean I owe you money. Wow, you're a genius. That's right, money. You owe this establishment 130 real. He points to the red ledger on the counter. Is there a red ledger on the counter? I don't see one. Uh, what do I owe this place for? Let's see. He dramatically turns a page in the ledger. Three nights at a tariff of uh, 20 real comes to... That's actually tariff. That's not uh, tariff in English. It has two Fs. Tariff uh, it means means more the, the rate. Of 20 real comes to 60 real. Uh, then there's the window you annihilated. The hole in the window was the first thing I saw when I came to work, so don't try to tell me you didn't. That will be 40 real in damages. Another thing you've annihilated is half the bar. You've run a tab of 30 real. Actually more, but we'll round it down to 30 for your hard work maintaining the st stability and order of revocal. That's 60 plus 40 plus 30 equals 130 real. And yes, real is still money. Well, uh, I'm going to say, what exactly is money? What are you, a philosopher? Actually, I might be. Money is what grown-up people use to pay for things. Things like this hostel room, or, he peeks into the, into the ledger, or eight bottles of potent blend and nine packs of royal extra. We use it for everything, really. Mm. I'll show him the coins. Yes, it is. That's 10 plus 10 equals 40. Now I'm down to 90, right? No, you see there's a tinge of sadness in his voice. That's 40 cents. Cents are a form of currency 100 times smaller than real. I'm not even going to take this. Come back when you have 130 real. 100 times smaller? Yes, but that's horrible. It is. He stands silently looking at the coppers on the counter. This is interesting. This I think we're we're kind of tapping into the kind of political aspect of this game. There's there's a lot going on politically in this game. Uh, isn't it evil? The order of magnitude between what is asked of a person and what they have. Um, darkness rides. It does, doesn't it? There's a shuffle of nylon as Lieutenant Kitsuragi looks for something in the pockets of his orange bomber. Esprit de corps. That's that's cop for I haven't offered to pay because I don't have any money either. <laughs> what happens now? He turns to the lieutenant. I, I love how he he's, he takes Kim seriously and just can't take us seriously. I'm sorry, but he has to pay. I can't let him stay here any longer if he doesn't. He doesn't have the money by tonight, then. He shrugs. Officer, maybe you're better off working this from home for now. You live in Jamrock, right? It's not that far away. Uh... Isn't there somewhere I can stay around here? I don't have a home. I don't remember where my home is. Fuck this place. I'll take my chances on the street. I'm going to say I'll see what I can do. 
I'm sorry I couldn't help more. Creases, uh, creases line his forehead above the spectacles. You should take this up with your station. I have a shortwave radio in my car, okay? We have to get this inv investigation started now. Alright, new task, pay for damages. The man wants to say something, then thinks better of it. Good luck. Okay, we're having a thought. By the way, where is home? The address is coming up blank, and this place sure isn't it. I have no idea. But you've been at this hostel cafeteria for only three nights. Where were you before? You had to be somewhere. Uh, far away? In time or space? Uh, in space? That doesn't sound like somewhere you can stay if you run out of money. Uh, could I trace the way back somehow to the exact street, the exact number on a building? Alright, we've gained a thought. You can try, run some addresses in your head when you get the time. Maybe a street or an apartment will appear. Okay, we've got what here? A couple new tasks. So we, we have to pay for the damage in the hostel. Uh, we have two thoughts now. I haven't internalized this one because it, I guess it reduces our logic. I don't know what we gain at the end of it either. I'm not sure. Well, we'll just hold on to that for now. Lonesome long way home. So we gain encyclopedia as our factual memory returns. Let's rewind. Let's trace your drunken steps back home. Jump across the raised channel bridge. Jump across the raised channel bridge southwest of here. Fall over. Get up. Get off the asphalt in 20 minutes. Shuffle your feet through the court, through courtyards, scaring little children. Go under the great raised motor tract, the 881, until you reach Le Domaine Eminent in North Jamrock. The streets are frozen this time of year, caked with ice. Walk down Main to Perdition. There's a side alley there, and your footprints in the mud. Hmm. Interesting. Is that Direction's home? Well, I guess we'll find out. I, I honestly don't know. Uh, experience 60 out of 100. Hmm. Let's uh, internalize that. Long way, long, lonesome long way home. I think well, that'll, that'll be the first idea that we'll inter internalize. So I imagine that this is kind of just going on in our brain while we, while we uh, kind of continue with the task at hand. Oh wait, did I? Oops. Okay. That's, there we go. Right, we're done talking to that guy. Um, I'm going to try and be as thorough as possible as we're walking around uh, the world here. Uh, I want to kind of click on everything and look at everything. Summer door closed for the winter. Uh, we have a dude kind of lying on the counter there. Sleeping dock worker. A man is sleeping at the table wearing mud caked boots and rolled down overalls. The back of his shirt reads Wild Pines, encircled by a logo with a tree. On the counter, rolled out of his open hand, you see a blister pack of headache medicine. Plus one ruckus talking to Gart. I don't know what that means, to be honest. Pick up the pills. I'm gonna try and wake them up. Check failure. Was that a white check or a? Yeah. Okay. It's it was a. It was a white check. Okay. So we need to increase physical instrument. We need to be stronger to wake them up. Pick up the pills. Magnesium, which I guess that increased our morale. The man does not mind. You probably need them more than he does. You've just picked up medicine. This item is stored in the bottom left corner of the screen above your character portraits. Click on plus the plus icon to heal your morale if you have morale damage. Okay. So I guess this is... Oh, I see. So I guess this is how much morale we have, and if it gets damaged, we can click that to increase it. Hmm. Well, that's that. What do we got on the table here? bottle of rum has been knocked over. Beautiful dark liquid is spilling out. Electrochemistry, which is our our drug fiend brain. That sugary black rum stain, stain on the counter makes you teary-eyed with joy. It's almost touching how syrupy and sticky it is. 
How long have you been up already? An hour? Two hours? Pretty long? It's drink o'clock. Or not now. Uh, I think we're going to try and, and not look like a total deadbeat around Kim. Not now. Oh, excuse me. Do you have something better to do with than, that, than lust for sweet, syrupy rum and lemonade with a twist of lemon? Maybe lime? Maybe who cares? Just rum. Um, I think we can come back here and, uh, and, and you know, drink rum and all that when we've gotten rid of Kim at some point when he's not kind of hovering behind us. Although I don't know if I can ever click on that again, to be honest. Anyway, I'm sure there'll be lots of opportunities to get wasted. If we if we feel so inclined, also we have a miserable hangover. Hello, sweetie. The elderly woman turns to you with a smile. Wait, who's sweetie? Who's sweetie? Why, you are, officer. I'm no sweetie. Look at me. You are a handsome man, officer, with your moustache and your chiselled jaw, and that silly dimple on your chin. Um, thanks, I appreciate it. You must forgive me. I'm getting so scatterbrained, I completely forgot to introduce myself. I'm Lena. My husband Morel and I are staying with our friend Gary just down the street, but I come here for tea when they're away. Her eyes glitter over the rims of her glasses as she looks up, smiling. So she's Lena, the cryptos cryptozoologist's wife. Hmm, what's a cryptozoologist? <laughs> Play the call. This Lena is wacky enough for the motley crew. Hire her on the spot. Uh, this seems kind of crazy. Maybe we can sort of hire her to sit and watch her. I don't. Know, I don't really understand, to be honest. I don't know if you've noticed, but I don't know where I am or what I'm doing now. That's a stupid thing to say. I'm gonna say this more out of curiosity than anything else, to be honest. How do you? How would you like to roll with me? Her eyes light up. Whatever do you mean? I want you to be my wheelchair wheelchair partner in fighting crime, ridding backyards of corpses, catching sequence killers. Sequence killers? Oh my, she sounds impressed. But I think you already have a partner, sweetie. <laughs> okay. A partner who needs you to help him get a corpse down from a tree. You're probably right, Kim. It seems to me that you lucked out with your partner. He has the look of an upstanding officer of the law, someone you can lean on, and sweetie, you are looking unsteady. Okay, I've got to get going now. Of course, dear. Good luck with your case. She gives you a small wave. Yeah. Hm. I guess that, that dialogue might have been just to kind of introduce us to our partner. Who knows, though? I'm not sure I understand how the skill points work in this game yet, to be honest. I know I put, uh, I, I guess it might have cost uh, skill points to put that thought in our head. Well, uh, we were told to go to the courtyard, so we will uh, try and keep Kim on the level here. You see a set of tire tracks in the brown slush that covers the plaza mosaic. Now we have an even chance, this is a white check. Reconstruct the movement. Let's try. Fail. No, these tracks are not interesting at all. Let the sweet street sweeper just sweep them away. Well, what kind of vehicle drove through here? Hard to say. Your vision is blurred and you're having difficulty concentrating thanks to your relentless hangover. <laughs> Alright, I guess we'll come back to that later. Although it is raining. It seems like the rain would uh, fuck up the tracks. Smells like spoiled meat and curled dairy. A human being decomposes. Uh -oh. This is 
this kid doing throwing rocks? Kono's got this! The boy throwing rocks at the dead body can't be older than 12. If there was ever such a thing as an ugly kid, then this is it. He's almost exquisite in his ugliness, like a gremlin. <laughs> oh yeah! Never good be Kuno! Uh... Hey kid, a word. Police business. Right in the dick, Kuno! Get him right in the dick! <laughs> that children ignore you. Slob it in the dick! <laughs> the perception. The boy is sweating pr profusely. His eyes are like two black holes and his jaw is twitching as if trying to break free from the empire of his body. Stop throwing rocks at my crime scene. Fuck that! <laughs> Kuno! Yeah! Right in the mouth bowl! The shit himself! The rake, Kuno! You should throw the rake at him, Kuno! The fuck does Kuno know what a rake is? Kuno's not a gardener! I don't have time for this. Well, let's see what we can do with his body. The corpse looks at you with bulging white eyes. The face around them does not look human. It's swollen and ready to burst. His lips are fish-like and his tongue like a ball gag in his mouth. You seem to be holding your breath. Look down. A cargo belt twists his neck at an unnatural angle. The body below appears stiff. It's letting out an ungodly rot. The smell seeps in even though you... Um, in through your drenched nostrils. Uh, a lot of reading. Um, yeah. We... I don't think the... Well, I'm, might as well try, to be honest. Oh God, why... What is that? Why is it so bad? Hmm... Well, we know what it is. Ugh, let's just turn away and leave. There's very little chance that we'll be able to... To, uh... Uh, this kid's ladder is rickety, but still climbable. The ladder's for kids. It wouldn't hold the weight of a grown man. What's going on here? There are several footprints in the mud left by a work boot. Anywhere from 6 to 12 pairs have walked here. Mm, let's see if we can pass this check. Oof. Damaged morale. Check failure. What kind of boots? Heavy workers boots reinforced with toes and hobnails all over the yard. Isn't this something an industrial worker would wear? Lieutenant. Workers boot tracks. Noted. The lieutenant ta takes out his little notebook. Can we... Yeah, we can retry that one when our vis visual calculus is increased. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I think we might have to... Well, I don't think we have to do anything, to be honest. What does he say if we talk to him? Yes. Nothing. Okay. Uh, let's, let's try and get the body down. Let go of your... No oh, yeah. We're not even trying to get the body down. We're trying to let go of our our nose without throwing up. Fail. Well, I guess we shouldn't have left the body there for seven days. Too late. It's impossible to keep it in. Your, the, your body curls and pushes it out, burst by burst, till a pool of vomit lies under your feet and your throat strings from stomach acid. God. It's okay, it happens to everyone. The lieutenant hands you his white handkerchief. Keep it. The hangover is clearly making this work worse for you. You could use some ammonia to clear your head. Yeah, okay. Where do you get ammonia from? There's Fritta near... Fritta with three T's. Crazy. Nearby, east of the hostel. They usually have a small apo ap ap apothecary. If they don't, he points to the greenhouse. There's a greenhouse here, and a gardener with a wheelbarrow on the corner of the Whirling in Rags, which I guess is the name of the hostel. If she works here, she might have something for the smell. Hmm, pretty clever. Having the ammonia as a modifier to the endurance check. Modifiers make checks easier and allow you to retry them. Uh, interesting. So if we want to pass an endurance text, test, we want to find it ammonia. Right. Someone is trying to go er grow herbs in the greenhouse. What's going on here? Let's finish looking through the courtyard and then go see if we can grab that ammonia. Magnesium for our morale. Money. 
So we can increase our morale again. Oh, uh, I want to just look here. What does this handkerchief do? I can't interact with it. Uh, I see. I guess we can sell it, I, I, I guess. I don't know if it's... Uh, can we use it in any way? It doesn't look like it. Okay. Hmm. Expect the victim's body. Yeah, we need to get... That's just our mission to get ammonia from the gardener. Uh, let's... Let's go do that first. We got lots of time to, to explore this courtyard. Oh. I thought that was really around there. I can zoom out. I keep forgetting I can zoom out. So that's his, that's Kim's car. Uh, hello. RCM in Martinez? What can I help you with? So the RCM, I guess, is the police. Uh, I have some questions for of you. Of course. What can I help you with? My partner told me you may have ammonia. Can I have some? Sure, I'm done with it. She takes a small capsule out of her breast pocket and hands it to you. Go easy on that stuff. It gives me a terrible headache. I think I'm going to ask her for directions. I have to run. Of course, I won't hold you back. She wipes her brow with a canary ye yellow glove. Her gloves. You get a feeling that you need them. You have a dead body to deal with after all. One more thing. Can I borrow your gloves? Sure, keep them. I have another pair. She hands you the rubber gloves with no visible annoyance. Thank you. So... Okay, that's the that's the ammonia. Where are the gloves? Gloves. Uh, can I put them on? Yes. They give me plus one interfacing. I think I need uh, endurance for the for the body check though. Um, what's this? What's going on here? A heap of snow melts in the wheelbarrow. Street sign says, fuck the police. Pigs go home. The street name is illegible. <laughs> well, the girl with the cigarette told us last episode that uh, they don't like the cops around here. And we're definitely starting to get that impression. Uh, I don't know whether this ammonia is going to make it much easier for us to do this, to be honest. But uh, let's, uh, let's give it a shot. Oh, this is a quest item. You don't have to equip it, just having it in your inventory is enough. Okay. There he still is. <laughs> it's only 8%. Uh, we failed. <laughs> The ammonia only makes it worse. The combination forces tears out of your duct. You manage to keep it in. What you manage to keep it in once. The second time, not so much. When the vomiting is done, your cheeks are wet with tears. Uh, spit and say nothing. Are you okay, officer? You feel the lieutenant pat you on the back. Heavy rhythmic pats. The weight is reassuring, like a crenelle on solid fortification. Pat, pat, pat. <laughs> You're facing tough tough odds here. It's aggravated further by alcohol withdrawal. <laughs> yeah, there's no hiding no hiding our, our alcoholism from Kim. Uh hmm. Why can't I keep it in if I've been a cop my whole life? I've seen captains puke their guts out. It never gets easier. You never get used to the smell. Every Monday is cadaver day. Throw up, investigate, throw up, initial autopsy, throw up, bag it. He pats you on the back again. 
Then drive to the station. Maybe throw up on the way if you didn't bag the thing right, uh, thing tight enough. You seem to be fine. I think I've lost my sense of smell. There's a pause. Oh, <laughs> a white lie. That's cool. Not being homeover helps too. Uh, I'm gonna just say this. That's probably a good idea. Clear our heads. But before we can do that, he look he withdraws his hand from your from your back and looks you in the eye. You need to get your shit together. Okay. Thought gain, volumetric shit compressor. <laughs> we need a volumetric shit compressor in our brain to get our shit together. <laughs> That's hilarious. We should go talk to locals, find something else to do while the wind changes. It's pretty bad right now. You've received a thought. When this dialogue is over, go to your thought cabinet at the bite menu and, and equip it. It's interesting, it's ordering us to equip that thought. Give it half an hour, get yourself together, then come back and have another go. Okay. Right, we will uh, We will equip that, for sure. Your shit is a part, <laughs> and it's rather unbecoming of a cop and a human being. It's supposed to be the opposite of that, together, compressed in a small area. To achieve a, a solid level of shit compression, squeeze your butt cheeks together for 30 minutes. Do something similar with the two hemispheres of your brain. Talk to people. Maybe that will help. Yeah, so uh, the, the first thing that we inter internalized, I think, long, some lo uh, lonesome long way home, like it's going to take like six hours for us to figure out where our home is, I guess. Uh, this one, on the other hand, we can we can internalize in 30 minutes. Doesn't seem to give us any kind of bonus, unless I'm misunderstanding how this works. I, I think it just allows us to kind of progress the plot, basically. Okay, what do we got here? Equip and complete volumetric shit compressor thought. Yeah, so we're, I think I think if we had managed to inspect the body without throwing up, then we wouldn't need to do this. That's, that's, what, I, that's what I'm getting from that anyway. Um, right. Whoa, what's going on here? He stopped throwing rocks. Cash, you say I'm throwing oh. rocks? No, he's still throwing rocks. Weird. What about you? Can we talk to you? Probably not. Kino, the pig's getting pretty close to me. Come to snuff my shit out, I think. Looks like it's time for me to go, Kuno. Pigs come to take me in. Just want to ask you some questions. I'm going away for a long, long time, Kuno. Going away for life. What's going on there? Fuck, are you trying to pull, pig? Uh... Listen, child, that corpse made me puke twice, and I was wondering why you don't... Stay away from me, pig! You don't want to see what happens when you corner me! Jesus. Well, let's take, uh, let's take a look around here. What do we got? The letter R wears a crown. On the ribbon below, a light above descending. This is the logo of the municipality of Re Revacol. Okay. Trash container. This trash container is locked. The sliding lid has a pack lock that says whirling, whirling in rags. There's something in there, not necessarily connected to the case, but still. Uh, why am I looking at you, trash container? You're just a trash container. The body is downwind from here. Maybe you prefer the smell of garbage to the smell of death? Uh, Lieutenant, what do you think could be in there? Trash, food waste from the cafeteria. They lock these containers to keep derelicts from flocking in. Could be evidence, too. Yes, I feel like there's something in there. What do you mean you feel? It's just a hunch. Maybe someone threw something in there? Mm-hmm. He leans to inspect the lock. Let me get the lock open. We could try using a pry bar. There's one in my motor carriage. Or... Or, Lieutenant. Or we could ask for a key from the manager of Whirling and Rakes. He probably has one. He might also have information. This is better than the pry bar idea. Interesting. So we can go back inside. 
and ask Garta, the cafeteria manager, for a key for the dumpster. Trash container back yours, so about that money I owed you. I've seen something here. <laughs> I guess we talk to him if we want to sing karaoke. It's a trash container out, uh, out back yours. Mine? No, it belongs to the whirling in rags. Thank you for clearing that up. Why do you keep the container locked? Why? To keep hobos and drunks out, that's why. And the neighbors too, they put their trash there and they don't pay for the garbage company. No, you have to pay for garbage companies here? Jeez. Thought as much, and are you the only party with access to the trash container? Well, yes, us and the garbage disposal company. Seems a little callous, doesn't it? Something stirs in you. I wonder what that feeling is. Prod at him and find out. Doesn't it seem callous to you, guarding even your leftovers from the poor? We asked him this question about money earlier, and and uh, he seemed to be kind of of a similar mind. Unless I'm misinterpreting this dialogue. Callous? What are you? Kraz Mazov? Almost all establishments in Revikal keep their trash locked. The whirling in rags is not special in that regard. Kraz Mazov, nom de guerre. Uh, was an economist and a historical materialist. He was a leading figure on the Grad side of the Centennial Revolution where, where he headed the nine-day government. Mazov is considered the father of scientific communism, Mazovian thought or Mazovianism. So I guess this Mazov or yeah, this Mazov guy is, is the Karl Marx of, of this of this universe. Nom de Gal, there we go again with French. Although this is this is like this is a, a, a Gallicism. Uh, in the sense that Eng English has adopted this as, as its own, as its own term. Uh, yum yum, tell me more. No, maybe I am Krasmazov. I'm no Krasmazov. No one was implying you were officer. Where were we? We need those keys. What do you need them for? It concerns the case. Lieutenant's voice is harsh and sudden. Please cooperate. Sweet. He takes keys from under the counter and hands them to you. Just bring them back once you're done, please. Right. Well, somehow, I don't know if it's a good idea for us to open that trash container after we've just puked with the body, but I guess that's what we're doing. How much time have we passed just talking to people with the... Yeah, so we're 36% through um, compressing our shit. <laughs> oh, God. I gotta say, I love that. I just love it. Volumetric shit compressor. I need one of those. In in real life. The trash, This trash container is locked. Oh, yeah, we already did that. Open the padlock with the key. With a well-oiled crack, the lock pops open. It should now be possible to simply raise the lid. Don't. Maybe you shouldn't. Didn't I just have a premonition that there's something in there? There is, but you won't like it. Sweat forms in your brow and your hand is still on the lid. Open the lid. Cool. The smell of rotten food rises to greet you. You see soggy cartons, dirty rags, and organic waste. For just in time, the lieutenant appears in. This hasn't been emptied for over a week. And look under the boxes of carton. We have gloves on. Does that help us? You see milk. An egg rest with one broken egg in it, some pasta wrapper, picking up the soggy packages somehow feels familiar. Interfacing, you've done this before. The movements are recorded in your elbows, the methodology in your fingers, you're used to this. Used to what, dumpster diving? No, searching for evidence in the trash. <laughs> Dive further. A box falls into pieces in your hands, in your hands. Baptiste Soleil cereal. There are plastic Pasta packages below and turbo noodles. Nothing of note, however. Pick at the rags. 
Among the threadbare kitchen towels, something catches your eye. A pair of denim trousers? Grab them. As the legs of the slime-covered jeans begin to unspool from the garbage, a rank corpse smell fills the air. The victim's clothes, the lieutenant smells them. Cadaverous odor is faint. If these belong to the deceased, they were removed when he was still in the early stages of decay. Lieutenant produces a black plastic bag marked evidence from his po pocket. Drop them in here, officer. Bag the trousers. Kim quickly searches the jeans. Guitar mark... The guitar marked blue jeans. Okay, that's the that's the, the brand. Uh, pockets empty or emptied? He wore them with a belt, too. A wide belt. The loops appear stretched, but... He looks into the container. The belt is missing. That's it. Do you see anything else in there? I have another bag here. Well, something slimy catches your eye. Reach for it. A drab, long-sleeved shirt, olive-colored, appears from the food waste, dripping with pus. Bag the shirt. This is a military-type overgarment. No label or serial number. This is the kind of rib-knit shirt that's worn over light armor to conceal it in an urban scenario. He nods to himself. Anything more? The rest of the rags are just kitchen-variety wastes. A, a yellow old mug that, that catches your eye, but other than that, a thrown-out towel, a mug, that's all. All right, we should go to Garta again and ask if he knows you put the clothes in the trash. It could be as simple as someone from the hostel cleaning the yard, or that one. He nods towards the red-haired boy, boy behind him. I'd advise against conf conf confronting that force. Yeah, we need to ask the kids to... You think someone from... Well, let's just, let's just proceed. Lieutenant nods and looks into the back of the trash container. Just organic waste, cold and slimy in your hands, apple and potato peels, mostly unidentified sludge, and the occasional chicken bone thrown in for good measure. But hey, nothing. It's nothing. Nothing more to see here. <laughs> okay. What's this? What? A blue piece of plastic sticks out from the apple peels. It's shiny. It looks like the corner of something. Pick it out. Damaged ledger. Something larger. A clipboard. A blue plastic clipboard with moist papers hanging from it. They look badly damaged, but you can still make out forms and notes written in a man's handwriting just like the menu in, in, the, in the hostel officer is that your paperwork I don't know what this is secret task complete find your paperwork <laughs> it is look he points to the clipboard the plastic has the RCM street grid on it you have even got an autopsy form in there a miserable looking slip of paper sticks to the board if you don't mind me asking, how did this get in the trash? Uh, I don't know, man. Someone from the Whirling threw it in the trash? I don't know, I'm boring. Boring? Try dangerous. You should, you should do a thorough... Uh, you should do a through inventory of that. Is this supposed to be thorough? I'm not sure. Be sure some has n not fallen into the hands of the RCM's enemies. Organized crime or worse. Official notes sometimes contain informants' names, even undercover oper operatives. Okay, I'll do that. <laughs> it would also not hurt to start taking notes on the case. He peers into the trash where soggy cartons and rags stink uninvitingly. Now tell me what your eagle eyes see, or are we finished? I'm going to keep looking. Okay, so we can interact with that. Cool. The mug. I'm getting that mug, too. Pick out a broken mug with an oddly racist depiction of the yellow man frolicking in, in saffron. An antique? Only in its social sensibility. Take the mug. Mm-hmm. The man briefly glances at the mug, then returns his sight to the trash. Close the lid. The container sounds a muffled gong. That's one thing off the list. The lieutenant sounds relieved. I think we got it all. Yeah. What do we got here? Read the ledger and the name on the and name the case. Who put the clothes in the trash? So we're gonna ask Garte, I think. It'll interact. Damaged ledger. Use the interact button. Okay, <laughs> it just, I literally didn't know how to do this. Oh, this button. I see. It's the ledger you found in the trash. A pitiful cabbage of white and yellow papers hang from plastic board, barely held together by a metal clip. This sad display is made complete by the faint smell of urinal cleaner. Anything else? 
There's a piece of toilet paper, or is it cleaning tissue? No, it's toilet paper desperately sticking to the back of the blue plastic clipboard. It's a metaphor for you. <laughs> Blow the pathetic's terror. Do not look into its blue heart. Uh, I don't want to inspect toilet paper. Uh, bl browse the white papers. They're not exactly white. They're damaged in patches by sunlight and alcohol and covered in dense blue handwriting. Ink escapes into watercolor patterns, reaching its tendrils across entire pages. The page itself, the paper itself, is checkered with faint red lines, forming short paragraphs. Once in a while, there's a red stamp that explains case files. Commit to paper. The case files themselves are plenty. You count more than a hundred so sodden, crumpled up, earmarked pages falling apart in your hands. They appear to be sufficiently organized and extremely dense, if mostly legible. What's it? What? It, what is in there? What are they about? Work, strife, poverty, the Jamrock Quarter. They're, they're, these are handwritten logs of investigation, investigations dating back to January 51, this year. The exact number is hard to estimate due to missing pages, but an odd naming convention. There are at least 20, maybe 30 cases undertaken, not completed, mind you. It's the middle of March. You have attempted two cases a week on average. I have to open an official case. Is there room? There is, for precisely one more. Fifteen pages near the ends remain untouched by the damage. The checkered grid forms a structure of passages, breaking the case into subtasks to accomplish. Once all the tasks are accomplished, the case is complete. Well, I guess we'll commit to paper. Sadly, the ledger only comes with an old, worn-down lead pencil. It's unfitting of this monumental <laughs> event. Ledger only comes with an old. Okay, right. We. I see. It will do barely. But Cam, do you have a pen? Tenant looks at his blue note notebook. Two fat, <laughs> shiny pens hang from the binder, like large caliber bullets on an ammo belt. He's not really saying anything. Just standing there, looking at them. Uh, can I have one? Blue oblong pen. Know that I give this to you. He pulls one from the loop with resentment. With this beauty, commit to paper. Tasks you've completed flow out of the blue oblong pen in a brash freehand uncannily similar to the rest of the letters. The wording comes easily. It's almost robotically simple, a language developed for mental rigor and simplicity. Inspect victim's body. Interview cafeteria manager. It's not exactly poetry, but poetry will be out of place. Cross out the ones you've already finished. A satisfying slash sounds acro uh, across the paper. You're done, it seems to say, and you, and you. <laughs> You're a swashbuckler with that pen, Harry, and it feels good. feels like completion. Things to be done, and things already done. The composition of reality. This is an extremely useful tool for a detective of the citizen's militia. Now, all that remains is to name the case. Lieutenant, have you by any chance named our case? No, actually. Any ideas? The hanged man, the Furies, are at home in the mirror. <laughs> the setting sun, shit on a stick. Uh, I think we'll go with the hanged man. Great. That's great. That's actually what I was thinking of, too. The hanged man. Good, strong name. We have a very good name for the case now. Read your ledger and name the case. Gain experience. Level up. Cool, man. Level up. He flips the pages of his notebook. I'm going to start calling it the hanged man. It's good we sorted this out. Uh, I think I think we're done with this for now. Um, do we want to look at anything else on here? In the back you see thin translucent copier paper, some neon yellow, some bright red, all covered in boxes like marching armies. These look like official forms waiting to be filled out. And then rip them from the binder and hand them hand them out according to type of form. What types of forms are these? Three. The top most are misconduct fines. The middle ones are station calls, and the bottom most are field autopsy forms. Each is easy enough to make sense of. You don't have to be an elect intellectual giant to do police work. Uh, field autopsy. A dozen pages of thin copy paper, bright red in color. You see the parameters of a deceased human form waiting to be filled in. Age, sex, condition of internal organs. 
this conduct fine. A monetary penalization raising from 20 to 250 real. Severe case allow for a 1,000 real, but they, that requires special paperwork. The details of, of issuing these fines are spread over the rest of the fields, but they appear pleasantly vague. <laughs> Interesting. So maybe we can fine people for things. Station call. These are quite sinister in tone. They give a date and time for the person to appear at a specified precinct police station. Below the call are minimal are criminal charges you risk by not appearing. Enough of these. Yes, all that remains now is to fill these those forms in and hand them to people. Fines for wrongdoers, interview requests for bad guys, and field autopsies to dead guys. Uh, what delicious power hid within this pathetic mess. You feel better. The rest of the stinking cellulose is much worse for the wearer. Being sandwiched between the board and the rest of the paperwork must have spread the fra spared the fragile copier paper. <laughs> Let's see here. Inspect the toilet paper. Inspect the clip. Press the... I'm not going to smell it. Look at the clipboard. What's the clip? An aluminum block runs down the width of the board, biting down the paperwork. Its crocodile teeth are the only thing keeping the papers together. A regular pencil, the tip worn down to nothing, has been attached to the clip. Run your finger across the... No. <laughs> Enough of the clip. Look at the clipboard. It's made of dark blue plastic hard enough to beat someone to submission with. The edges are rounded, however. The U4 sized board feels thick and heavy in your hand. Light shimmers on its wet surface. On the back you see the embossed letters RCM. Shake the ledger. Something rattles inside ever so slightly. Is there a hidden compartment? Permeables. It's not hidden per se. The car compartment is made for permeable materials that would get damaged if something happened to it. Peek inside. Plastic shimmers through lapis lazuli, it's, but it's not like lapis lazuli, but it's not see-through. You cannot see to its center. How would I open it? With your hands, you, f you four-sized pages hang from the clip screwed to the top of the board. Interfacing. L Wait, I think we're done. I think we can. I think we're done with that thought now. I'm not sure, but let's let's put the ledger away for now. What's this? We can interact with that. Okay, I see. Interacting allows us to inspect these things. Let's let's uh let's inspect that later. Let's take a look at here at our thought cabinet. Thought complete. Volumetric chip compressor. Bizarre scientific news from Revacol West today, where a police officer's shit has been observed at a pressure of around 495 gigadecimals. These metallic hydrogen levels of shit togetherness were thought to exist only at the center of a collapsing star. It's not law official. It remains to be seen how the shit singularity lasts. All endurance white, tech, uh, white checks unlocked. Learning cap for endurance raised to four. Except. Awesome. Cool. Nice. Well, we uh, we also leveled up. Does that just mean that we? Does that just mean that we? Okay, we can ask up the clothes. Inspect the. Okay, we've we've done that. Oh, here we go. This is how we level up. So, I think we can maybe increase our endurance. So we, we pick a skill to level up, right? Intellectual intellect base plus four uh, signature skills. We could what if we level up endurance and try and get that body down or whatever? Take the blows, don't let the world kill you. Seems like a good idea. Maybe to counterbalance the fact that we only have two in this. I guess some of these stats are affected by stuff that we're wearing as well. Uh, I think we'll level up endurance. Seek base, learn skill. Take the blows and let the world kill you. Cool. Except changes in blows. Uh, Matt. Uh, what's this? That's That means that we can try it again. Okay. There's more stuff we can do with the damaged ledger. Can we try again? Hopefully we won't. 83%. 
plus six from having our shit compressed. Let go of your nose without throwing up. Oh, thank God. As you breathe in, the odor comes over you. It's the spell of the mind telling you to run, and your stomach uh, to wring itself empty. With the, with your hands at your sides and your eyes squinting, you stand you stand in it. Hmm. <laughs> Step closer. Man before he was naked, but for a pair of underpants and enameled boots. His screen is greenish, marbled with decaying veins and blotched by lividity. A fading web of tattoos covers his chest and shoulders. The cargo belt used to fasten him to the branch above appears industrial in strength. Inspect the, inspect the boots. The material appears to be ceramic. Ceramic boots? Its clean white stands in stark contrast to the decaying flesh above the knee. The man wore thick polymer socks, probably for padding. A fine array of interlocking plates covers them. Delicate and fragile, they feel alien to the world around you, out of place somehow. These are clearly not boots, they're armor, possibly part of a larger set. These aren't boots, are they? They're armor. Indeed, with his notebook under his arm, the lieutenant crouches to inspect the soles. Technically speaking, these are sabatons, not boots. What kind of armor is this exactly? Ceramic plate, zirconium dioxide most likely. This is, this is where the make would be. Where? Under the heel, Fairweather, he turns the boot slightly. Fairweather model T500VE. I'm guessing that's vitreous enamel. This is advanced stuff. Hm, the plot thickens. Uh, knock on the boots, pull the boot off. What happened to the rest of it? The locals probably scavenged it. It would be odd if he had more, more on after seven days. New task, where's the rest of the armor? We should keep a lookout for those for these pieces. The armor could yield some information. He nods towards Kuno, who who's eyeing you suspicious suspiciously. This one might actually know. Maybe he was just wearing these boots and there's there is no rest of the armor. I don't know, let's see if I understood. The sabaton dangle off the man's decaying form, ageless and synthetic. The cadaver slowly twists uh, on the cargo belt, his torso covered in tattoos and extremities blushed pink and blue. Inspect the belts. The hangman's knot is pulled tight by the weight of the quartz pillow. Yellow, hard-edged polyester cuts into his neck. Above, a sliding buckle ties the belt to the branch. This is a steel-reinforced cargo lashing belt, big brother of the regular cargo belt. It's used for tying cargo under six rotor airships. <laughs> There's airships in this world. Don't ask me how I know, but this is the, a lashing belt used for airlifting cargo. Airlifting? I thought it was used on lorries for strapping cargo to them. Apparently this is the reinforced kind for air transport. My brain tells me so. You know, it's the local harbor uses six rotors to shuffle containers around. I get the sense that they used whatever was on hand without paying much attention to not incriminating themselves. I sure wanted him to stay up there. The rope is reinforced with steel wiring. I was afraid it would be. He rises to inspect the noose. Thin steel wiring, parallel strands. This makes getting him down more problematic than I assumed. Uh, look at the corpse. Inspect the tattoos. An intricate web of blue lines stretched across stretches across the torso. From the right shoulder up to the solar plexus, each time they intersect sect, a small white star is formed in their crossing. Hundreds of fading asterisks riddle his skin. Their concentration is highest around his heart. This corpse is marked by stars. What will mine be marked by? Alcohol and heartbreak. Is this a map of the night sky? Map of the stars. He turns around to breathe before inspecting it closer. I do see some similarity to astronomical charts, great century Messinian maybe, but this seems more particular, customized somehow. As if someone left out most of the night sky, fil filtering it through personal choice. The principle of this filter remains unknown to you. The thought uh, dissipates and you feel as though you were only half right. I'm missing something. <laughs> so am I. A sudden ringing z fills the air as the lieutenant pulls down the zipper of his orange jacket. He takes a thin piece of milled aluminum from, from his coat pocket and pulls it open. 
Sounds like a, a sword being unsheathed. The small lens appears. Some sort of can camera. Let the lieutenant do his work. Shit, Kuna, what the fuck is that? <laughs> An instant color camera. He produces two metal capped ampoules and clicks them into place on the side of the apparatus. A thin slot shines there. I only have two ampoules, so nobody move. I don't want to waste one. He points the camera at the corpse, peering into it. The lens needs adjusting. Then... A, s a sound, a shrill flash, followed by the breaking of a small ampoule of glass. You see streams of color pour onto the thick, glossy piece of paper rolling out. Seems like the technology in this world is sort of, uh, you know... It seems like they have advanced technology in certain ways and less advanced technology in other ways. Continue. On it, a perfect, a uh, color-perfect copy of the dead man's tattooed chest. In case we need it, the lieutenant says, and shakes the paper, letting it dry in the cold, uh, in the cold wind. Cool machine. Yes, he slides the camera closed and tucks, tucks it away in his belt. It's pretty. It is pretty cool, isn't it? There's only one ampoule left. Use it widely. Uh. It contains insight to the victim's person. By his build, I'd say this was a man of physical violence. The story he wanted his body to tell was important to him. It is his letter to us. Someone should decipher it. We'll need to show it around. Mm. Do I want to take it from him? Sure, just don't lose it. He hands you a piece of rolled up photo paper. It's no larger than a pack of cigarettes. A glassy eyed corpse looks by, his mouth mute and his skin as colorful as the chemical rainbow on the photo paper, teeming with opportunistic organs. Um, what if we. What if we look him in the eye? His eyes are milky white and blind to the world, protruding comically from their sockets. This is. This, there is no one home, just subaquatic terrors there. Dark brown hair grows on his head. His face is ready to explode from the organic processes inside. The death's head grin has ju has passed. What remains is an unrecognizable mess. Oh, might as well try it. Tell me, who are you, dead man? Failure. The corpse is dead silent. You have no idea why you just said that. Who is he? He's a male, 40 to 50, with an athletic build. Uh, I guess we squint and take a step back. As you narrow your eyes, the monster before you blurs into a violent mess of green and pink. This is a trick. You've done it before. Pink is where the blood settled in the first hours post-mortem. You can use it to see if the cor corpse has been tampered with. Does his position at the time of death match the discoloration? Observe. Only the lower extremities are pink with a dark blue. His fat, fatted hands, thighs, and his... This is really gross, guys. Thighs and his neck just above the noose. The, the rest of the corpse appears dark green in the cold spring air. His face and hands are pink. Thighs, too. I see. He adjusts his glasses. His neck, too. The lividity goes right up to his chin. We have good, well-pronounced discoloration here. The monster comes back into focus, an explosion of color coursing with dark marbled veins. His stomach appears pregnant with something. The black liquid streams down his thigh on, and onto his boot. So, what do you think? I think he was upright after death. His hands, feet, and neck are discolored. Agreed. He points to the belt, especially on the neck. The belt acted like a tourniquet, keeping the blood in his head. The hypostasis supports a hanging. Yeah. Yep, seems like a lynching to me. Or could it be, could it still be he was moved after death? There's always a chance. We should check for ligament marks on his neck to see if they're in tune with the belt. We'll have to get him down first. Back up and catch your breath. So how do we get him down? He stops to think, then checks his notes. Are you sure we finished the preliminary examination of the cadaver? We might miss some of these things once he's down. I think we've been thorough. I think we've done everything. To you. We've been thorough. Do you have a plan for getting him down? We just got a bunch of experience. Hmm, the steel reinforced belt presents a unique challenge. I brought chain cutters, but I don't see a good angle of approach to the belt. 
He doesn't actually think the challenge is unique. He thinks it's frustrating, annoying, and harder than he thought. The cadaver is a good 1.2 meters up. Neither one of us can reach the belt without assistance. And even if we do, there's a question of cutting the airship strength material. Hmm. Could saw the branch. Climb up there and saw the branch? Yeah, it seems dangerous. There has to be a less risky way, with less falling down off trees. Oh, it's not that high. Um, it seems like a lot of hassle to not do it. Maybe we could shoot him down? Maybe we could ask for help from the harbor. Maybe we can... That just seems stupid. Uh, can someone else do it? Maybe we can ask for help from the harbor. I was really hoping we wouldn't. The Union appears appear to be suspects in this case. It seems like a dangerous route to go down. Yeah, wait, let's reconsider. Maybe we can shoot him down. Yeah, the enthusiasm is understanding. Bang, bang time, pig. Shoot his head off. The lieutenant remains unaffected. How? Where the buckle ties the rope to the branch. That's a good spot to aim. There, the buckle holds the belt together. Where? He corrects the glasses. Ah, oh, yes, I see. If the shot hits hits that, there might be a chance to release the belt. Yeah, now we're talking. Entertain the, the Kuno with some shit. They'll miss. The pigs will miss. Take the shot, Lieutenant. What's the worst thing that could happen? Uh... That seems like a stupid thing to say. Silence. With his elbows sharp, the lieutenant unzips his jacket. He produces a lightweight firearm. He drops a paper cartridge in the barrel, separates the scouring stick, and gives the cartridge the cartridge five tucks. Interfacing, securing it in place. That's a uh, Kijil A990 Armistice mass-produced muzzle loader. Acetic frugal, one of the most common firearms in the world. He then steps back and assumes the Phallus desk position, taking aim. The corner of his eye twitches, his finger on the tri trigger. So I'll just say nothing. He's gonna fucking miss! The, kid, the kid's voice is drowned in a shrill blast that echoes off the wall and surrounding ten tenements. A cloud of smoke slowly parts in the air, and as the lieutenant steps back and says to himself, God damn it. Fucking idiot. Mulkape asshole. Kuno could have hit it, but then Kuno's not fucking handicapped, is he? Uh, try again, maybe? No, we're lucky as it is. We didn't break anything, and the victim's remains are uncompromised. He looks around at the windows overlooking the yard. Any more mistakes could put us in an unfortunate position with the locals. We have eyes on us. I didn't do us any favors with that. Alright, it's okay, man. Kuno, sorry too. Kuno feels feels sorry for the for the binoclard. The lieutenant doesn't say any any word. Uh, he doesn't say a word. He just looks at the gun in his hand. What now? I have to say, it's beginning to look unlikely we can get him down without assistance. I'm not gonna try and shoot it down. <laughs> can someone else do it? Someone else? You mean like the police? I mean someone who's below detective. Someone like a paid garbage man or a cleaning crew? I have bad news for you. That is a detective. I know it's hard, but I assure you the others won't come to help to help us. We have a growing sanitary concern here. We need to get him down fast. That's it, we have to help ask for help from the harbor. Okay, he looks at the cargo belt. They do have tool the tools and the men, and since they since it looks like they put him there, they can get him down too. He sighs, okay, let's do it in the lousy, dangerous way. Let's get to it then. Well, 
uh, I think I'm going to have to end this episode. It's probably a bit longer than I was hoping, um, but uh, it has been very, very interesting. We have, we have uh, progressed in our investigation, and and also uh, we've got quite a few, quite a few tasks. Some of which are related to the the main investigation, and and some of which uh, are are completely unrelated. Uh, so next episode, we'll uh, we'll keep uh, keep exploring this this fascinating game. Anyway, uh, if, uh, thanks for watching. If you enjoy this video, like the video. If you want to see more, subscribe to the channel. Uh, see you next time. Ciao.